Hello and welcome back. Amber here, and I'm fresh off of a reread from George R. R. Martin's A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. And of all of the stories set in the Song of Ice and Fire universe, the Duncan Egg novellas are the ones that I'm looking forward to the most as an HBO adaptation. So today I'm going to be talking about the stories themselves and give some opinions on why I think these novellas are so strongly suited for a great television show. The novellas take place roughly 90 years before the main series and shares many of the same elements. A young hedge knight named Sir Duncan the Tall travels to a tournament in search of fame and fortune and meets a young boy named Egg, whom he makes a squire. Fans of A Song of Ice and Fire and House of the Dragon will recognize the political intrigue, moral ambiguity, and complex character relationships. The stories are full of the same heraldry, customs, and culture, but the Duncan Egg novellas stand out because it offers a different type of viewpoint than what we're accustomed to with the previously mentioned books and series, and that makes the story unique. So let's talk about the world building. The setting takes place in the same richly detailed world, but in a different time period and on a much different scale. Duncan Egg travel the countryside often stumbling upon major historical events. Instead of a focus on a broad story with the viewpoints of kings and queens and the political plottings of lords and ladies, we are looking at the landscape from a close perspective from a main character of humble origins. The problems of the common people are largely a backdrop for the main series, so it's interesting to have the opportunity to explore this world from a different point of view than what we've seen. And A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms offers that introspective look at the inner workings of Westeros starting off with the main characters. So let's take a look at them. Like all of George R. R. Martin's characters, Dunk and Egg are well drawn and fully fleshed out, but they're extremely easy to root for. Dunk comes from Flea Bottom, and the relationship between he and Egg is likable, endearing, and easy to cheer on. It's a big change from the backstabbing and drama of Targaryen history and Fire and Blood, and it makes Duncan Egg wholesome in comparison. Their banter and camaraderie is so much fun to read, and their loyalty to one another is really heartwarming. Despite the wholesome relationship between our two main characters, there are still big, colorful moments that make the series exciting. Some of my favorite events in the series are the tournaments. The Duncan Egg novellas don't have dragons, but what they do have is tourneys and lots of tourneys. And the tournament at Ashford Meadow is a major plot point. The jousts and battles that take place are full of what you would expect from George R. R. Martin. There is fanfare and pageantry and lots of bloodshed. It is exciting and brutal watching the protagonist Dunk navigate these events. The tournaments are described in vivid detail and the action is full of suspense. There is no shortage of combat and fighting. Now aside from the world building and the characters being great, the themes within the novella are what really draw me in. Readers explore the themes such as honor, loyalty, and the struggle between powerful and powerless. The themes are woven in a narrative which makes the readers think and reflect. The story has several themes that are explored throughout it, so let's talk about those. The first one is honor, and the concept of it is a reoccurring theme in the stories. The main character, Sir Duncan the Tall, adheres to a strict code of honor. He's a good man, and he is bound by his knightly oaths. He puts great value in his words and his reputation, so when he is tested by the cruel and arrogant, he must navigate situations where his sense of honor clashes with what is practical. Sometimes upholding his honor puts him at a disadvantage and it motivates his actions throughout the story. The next theme is justice. The concept is explored in the novellas through the actions of various characters. Some of them seek justice through revenge or by upholding the law, while others seek justice by doing by what they believe is right. The story raises the question of what is just and what is fair and who has the right to decide it. The next theme is power. The quest for power is another big one in the story. The Targaryens and their loyalists are still vying for control of the Seven Kingdoms, and the tournament at Ashford Meadow is seen as an opportunity to gain political influence. The characters in the story are constantly assessing their own power and seeking ways to increase it, which makes an interesting backdrop for our somewhat naive protagonist. Lastly is the juxtaposition of social class. Now this is a big one and probably my favorite. 
Sir Duncan the Tall is lowborn and often looked down upon. He is acutely aware of his lower status, but he has to navigate situations where his lack of social standings is a major liability. The story begins with him creating a lie about who he is for the sake of survival. He has next to nothing, no mentor, no money, and he needs to sell the lie that he is a knight to compete in this tournament. Egg provides a lot of counterbalance in the relationship, but it also highlights two people from two different classes trying to find security in this world. The relationship draws attention to the differences between social classes. It also shows the difficult potential for someone like Dunk to rise through the ranks all while trying to keep his honor. Conflicts arise from the tension between different classes and different identities. Now, just because the series is in development by HBO doesn't necessarily mean it'll move forward, but I'm in the camp that is really hoping that it does. Overall, the Duncan Egg novellas are really well written and engaging. They contain some of George's fantastical elements, but it's presented in a much more grounded and realistic way, with romance and smaller land conflicts and conspiracy. It's friendly and warmer in a way that the other adaptations aren't, but it's still full of the violent, gritty intrigue that fans are familiar with. Now that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel. I'd like to cover the Hedge Knight, the Sworn Sword, and the Mystery Knight individually, so keep an eye out for that in the future, and I will see you next time.